There is no such thing called simple in the universe. We only use the word simple for the seemingly abundant things around us. So we think they are not important. That's why we have a hard time explaining or understanding simple things, such as meditation, water, and dust. This is an universal hand gesture that somebody is showing you how untidy you are. It is not pleasant when somebody does this to you, but without dust, the universe couldn't form the stars and the planets, our immune system would be weaker, and it would take 300% humidity to build a small rain cloud. Everything you see on this table makes dust. Some of them will make it in a couple of hours, some of them will make it in a couple of decades. But there is no escape. Everything sheds, everything chips down at some degree, and when that happens, dust will produce. Surprisingly, what makes dust dust is not the material or the size of the particles in the air, but how long the particles stay afloat in the air. So air current and gravity are the main determinators what is dust and what is not. And yes, smoke is also dust. Dust in our atmosphere reflects the sunlight during the day and paints the sky blue. Also, it catches the water molecules and builds clouds. A water molecule sticks to a dust speck in the air. It starts to bond with other water molecules. Then, it falls as rain. When the water molecule freezes, it forms a snowflake. Dust also gives each snowflake its unique shape. So, let's start our expedition with a dust bunny. Dust bunny is the jackpot for any dust enthusiast. It contains everything you can imagine. Heavy metals like mercury, lead, copper, and all the other things in the air, like spores, lint, insect body parts, dander, and human skin are just some of them. However, everything is so densely compact and mixed, it is hard to distinguish individual specks. There should be a better way to observe dust. Dust is abundant, and catching it is very straightforward. Yet, it requires patience. It would be best if you pretend that dust is like a butterfly. If you try to catch it, you will fail, but if you wait still, it may be land on you. And dust definitely will. Now I'm going to wait. Catching dust is easy, but observing it under the microscope has its own challenges. This vast monochrome desert of dust won't reveal much to us. Particles are either pitch black or transparent like glass. There is little or no color on the subject. The main reason is, this footage was recorded with bright field microscopy, where the light reaches the camera sensor directly. But there are things to look at here. Look at these droplets. They could be cooking oil, the soap, deodorant, or maybe my spit becomes airborne while talking at a Zoom meeting. When airborne, everything you see on this footage goes into your lungs. Now let's do some research. So far, I've talked about the dust that our lungs can handle, but there are even smaller particles as fungi, bacteria and viruses. And the ones we create while we are cooking or cleaning our homes as a byproduct. 
this fine dust is almost always airborne and harmful to human health. Enter the air purifiers. An air purifier equipped with a true HEPA filter can clean this fine dust 99.97% accuracy. This model that I use at my place requires a filter change every six months. And this is precisely where true HEPA filters shine. A bit dirtier true HEPA filter works better than a brand new one. As you see, bigger dust particles become another layer and trap minor dust. This filter is filled with dust, but still doing its job very well. Check out the dust speck on the corner. The HEPA filter can still pass air, even though it is dirty and outside of the air purifier. The new filter is on, and it will be cleaning the air for the next six months, unless I forgot to change it on time. The dark field condenser has arrived. You can see here how the dark field condenser operates. As you see, the light is blocked by a plate. It can only enter from the slits on the edges of the condenser. Let's see if the dark field condenser creates a difference. Only a deep sea explorer can understand the excitement you have when you look at the images produced by the dark field condenser. Here, everything is mysterious in its nature. You can see the dust as is, yet it doesn't mean you know what it is made from. Everything looks like hanging in the space. Frozen, like a deep water fish. The dust appears very alien when you look at it with the dark field condenser. Even though this is an alien world, the more I look at it, it becomes more familiar and personal. A green fiber from my grandfather's rug. A blue thread from my winter jacket. A beautiful shard, which is probably my dandruff. A speck of red wool from a hat that my mom knitted 30 years ago. Do you remember this black object? It looks like this with dark field microscopy. And there is one type of dust that I cannot show you under the microscope. Space dust, which is an average size of between a stone and an SUV. In fact, the whole history of humankind and the old beings we discovered so far placed on a giant dust bunny. A classic science fiction phrase we always hear says, there is no up or down in space. This phrase always sets the atmosphere for the reader. Up and down is only have a meaning when we stand on a planet. If you want to understand what dust is, you need to think in the same way. In the universe, there is no big or small. There is only bigger than and smaller than. Are you not agree? Then change my mind. Put your comments down below. Since I'm using more than 6 grams of coffee, I need a bigger cup. 
This era example reminds me of the Piri races map. Let's look at our subject a bit closer. Like all tea, Turkish tea originated from Camellia sinensis. Just in 2010, these tin bugs cost US farmers more than 37 million dollars. Click, click, click.